Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. Today I will continue my uh, video series about the European comics and specifically about the Franco-Belgian scene. The idea of these videos is to uh, display the Franco-Belgian comic scene in small portions. It's such a vast subject that it's better to put it into smaller pieces and then look at each piece uh, one at a time. This is only my second video of the series, as the first one was the previous one, which was about the bande dessinée, the term bande dessinée. And today I'm going to talk about the ninth art. And that is something that overlaps a bit with the whole bande dessinée uh, subject. But I wanted to keep them separate, as uh, I think that the bande dessinée as a term is more known. Although, as I uh, explained in my video, it's not that symbol to define what it actually means. But the ninth art term is actually much easier to define. And it's a very peculiar term as it's kind of true only in two countries, France and Belgium. But now you ask, what is ninth art? Well, in short, it's comics, but it's actually only comics in the Franco-Belgian comic scene. In those countries, Comics, the bande dessinée, is actually thought and respected as a form of art. And this usually raises two questions. First is like, really, art, comics, how come? And the second question is that if comics are the ninth art, what are the eight arts before that? The eight art forms before comics are from number one to eight, they are architecture, sculpture, painting, music, dance, poetry, and then there, there is film and television. Now you might ask, okay, who, who put this in this order and who decided that they were art? Well, that's the question. That is still a question. This is a list that has been argued or discussed about as long as it, they have existed. And that discussion still continues. But if you think about the things that I listed, you know, they kind of make sense, at least the comics in it. Then you might actually even ask, are there more art forms? Well, as far as I know, there's only one added. Uh, the tenth one is video games. And, and that includes all the digital art forms. As I said, I am, I'm only interested on the fact that the comics are thought as the ninth art. Now, you might also be wondering now, what am I talking about? Ninth art. And you won't be alone in that. The fact that comics are seen as an art form in general, it is the Franco-Belgian comic scene thing. These countries truly love and respect their comics. I mean, the fact that they are listed, the comics are listed in this art form list, which is respected in, in, in France and so on, it's also uh, backed up by the state. So it's not just comics fans making this up. Although it was the comics fans that did make it up yeah, originally. I mean, this art form list, it has been around first in the form of six and then they added the film and the television. But it was Maurice de Bever who added the, the comics in as the ninth art form. He did a series of articles of going through the comics history back in the 60s. And we know, know this Maurice de Bever better with his pen name Mori, which is Maurice. He is the creator of Lucky Luke. So this definition of comics being the ninth art form really comes from a true comic fan, but it's stuck. And nowadays it's accepted in, in a level of government. I mean, in France, it's possible that you are even giving a civil knighthood for being a comics artist, like Moebius. I think he, he got two of them. And to underline how respected these artists are, you don't even have to be French or Belgian to get this knighthood. So yes, the knighthood has been uh, given also to foreign artists. And if you think of this kind of society that so much respects their comics, the writers and the artists, it's no wonder that also many European artists and writers, they seek to get the work from those French companies, the publishing companies or, or the Belgian companies 
it, you know, if they get their foot in there to be a writer or artist in those companies and they publish it, you already are part of a massive and very respected community. I mean, in France alone, they sell millions and millions of albums every year. So it's easy to see why it is very inviting for the locals, the Europeans, to get into their scene, even rather than their own within their own country. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, it's, it's because of this series. This series is meant to spread the word of European comics in general, but as it's focusing on its most important single thing, which is the, which is the Franco-Belgian scene, I think it's important to show these very special details about that particular scene. As I'm not expecting these videos to make any new comics fans, I don't expect someone to watch these and say, okay, I'm going to start reading comics. I am preaching to the choir. I'm expecting that this video is seen by people who already read comics. And I hope that a lot of them haven't been into European comics yet. They might be interested or not interested at all. But I think that the more you know about the subject, the easier it is to jump in. And I have to remind, just like in the previous video, that European comics, it's not Franco-Belgian comics. That Franco-Belgian scene is just one thing in Europe. It's the most important one thing, but we are a collection. Europe is a collection of many small countries with different cultures. And I want to talk for all of them. And if I sound like a salesman, then you have been listening because I really want people to get into this scene. And if we come back to this ninth R idea is that just think wherever you are in your country, how far is your country that even those people who don't read comics, I'm not talking about the fans of comics now, I'm talking about everybody in your country, that all of the people in your country would consider comics as a cool thing and uh, as a form of art even if they would not be reading it themselves they would you know you know it, it's like painting not everybody paints but if you see someone painting you can kind of think that okay that's art or someone's doing a sculpture you could or poems they, they're writing poetry i think in most countries if you think about the population in general they would consider oh that they are doing art but how is it with comics and that's where the france and the belgians outshine everybody and again the close thing to this would be manga japanese have the same kind of respect for this culture that is now spreading like wildfire uh, as manga is probably the fastest growing uh, section of uh, comics and just in case you missed it uh, one of my favorite uh, publishers for comics is uh, cinebook cinebook is doing very important work as they are translating uh, the European comics into English, into very good English. But if you look at their logo, even that logo has the ninth R in it. And I think that message is lost on most if I don't say it aloud. And I do hope that the comic book's image would go higher in other countries too. But there are some obstacles to go over. I mean, let, let's look at the US market and, you know, they call their comic books, well, comics or funnies. Even the name kind of suggests that it's a something to laugh at. Whereas the thing like Bande Designate just means drawn strips. Of course, they originate from the same thing about the comic strips that were published in the newspapers, but just the words alone are quite different because the Bande Designate doesn't really tell you about the content, but the comics or funnies. I think funnies is now is very old fashioned word, but still it, it's there, that attitude is there within the comics in, I think, in the English speaking countries. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, to get European comics in the better position in the market, it requires the attention of English speaking population, US market particularly. And that's one of the reasons I'm making noise here. Just my two cents on, on, on this issue. But maybe one day we get comics up to a level where everybody even those who don't read them would see comics as a platform of media where these uh, creators are seen as talented as writers of 
normal books or poetry or painting uh, those painters and that would mean that comics would enter the mainstream of course it would be also reviewed the same way as records or like the musics or films and so on but let's see if it happens in my lifetime i'm not holding my breath but i am making noise but that was all about it i just wanted to explain this ninth art term as it very much goes hand in hand with the bande dessinée term and it's all about the Franco-Belgian comic scenes too. So I couldn't leave that out. But now it's done and I have to see what will be the next subject. But until then, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.